Alrighty. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for attending the um, Massey Customer Hour for Dynamics GP. Um, this is Yelena Sebasic uh, for Massey Consulting, and um, thank you all for joining us. Um, today, Billy Gre Greg is going to be your um, presenter, so I will hand the floor over to her, and if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to type it in in the um, chat box to the side, and um, we will address them at the end. So, Billy, if you want to go ahead and start. Okay. Welcome, everyone, today to the Dynamics GP Massey Customer Hour. Um, as we just said, if you do have a question, you can put it into the chat window on the screen, and um, we will usually take all questions at the end. Just to give you a little bit of information about Massey Consulting, we were founded in 2002. Um, we're made up of CPAs and accountants, and um, you know, we're a GP Gold Partner. We're Sage Intact Presidents Club for 2014, 15, and 17. Um, so just a little bit of information about Massey Consulting. I am a senior Dynamics GP consultant. I have been working with um, Dynamics since 1998 um, and uh, SQL trained, um, Scribe, Smart Connect certified, a few other things. So, okay. So today's topic, we're going to talk about the Reconcile to GL tool and how you can use that as part of your month's end, or um, we do have some customers that find that it's nice to use it throughout the month. So let me make this full screen so you can see it a little easier. Okay, so the Reconcile to GL tool was introduced, and it's been several versions back, but they made some additions in 2013. In 2013, they added the, um, option to also reconcile inventory and bank rec. Previously, it had, had just been accounts receivable and accounts payable. So we will take a look at this. To get to the reconcile tool, it is under your, if you go to your financial tab on the left-hand side, it's under routines and reconcile to GL. So when you pull this window up, you have, uh, the first time you pull it up, you will not have any accounts listed here. So if I were to select inventory, it does have one account that was populated um, when someone else has run some, uh, some reconciles here on this test box. But you would have to populate this with your account. So if we were looking at our accounts receivable, you would want to populate this with every accounts receivable account here. So in this case, we just have the one account listed. We're putting in, this is our reconciliation date. We are in a test instance, so this is showing 4-12-2017, but we are going to do a reconcile from 3-1 to 3-31. You don't have to do it for a month. You can do it for a day, you can do it for a week, you can do it for a year. Uh, typically we say that if you have not done this in a long time, or if this is the first time running it, run it for a shorter time period first so that you can see how long it takes to generate. I wouldn't recommend running this for a year the very first time you run it because it may take some time to go through the data depending on how much data you have. So we are going to run this from 3.1 to 3.31. This is our receivables management and it would ask us where we want to put this file. So we're going to put this file on our desktop. I could then select process And it's going to open this up in Excel. So in this case, we can see on the left-hand side is our receivables transactions, and on the right-hand side, we have our general ledger transactions. So we have our sub-ledger on the left, our ledger on the right. We can see our beginning balance here for our sub-ledger, and then our beginning balance for our ledger. We can see what the debits and the credits were as well. So if you had multiple accounts, each account would be listed here on the right-hand side. 
in this particular case, we don't see anything that is in this unmatched section. But the way that it divides this report is at the top it gives us our beginning, beginning balances. Then in the middle we have our unmatched transactions, our potentially matched transactions, and then our matched transactions. And then at the bottom we have our ending balances and then we can see differences. So typically if you have transactions that are only in, so maybe someone comes in and makes a journal entry to our receivables account. It would not be in our subledger in that case. If that were the case, we would see it here in our unmatched transactions on the right hand side because it would only be in our ledger. So, the other nice thing about this reconcile tool is if you have a question about something, you can always click anything that's in blue. It'll ask you, um, you know, you may get this security notice just warning you that you're going to go to another program. Do I want to continue? I'm going to select yes. And then this will take me to that transaction inside of GP. And I already had some of this open. I apologize, but let's click on this. And of course, this one is not going to open in this case. This is a test box, so some of these transactions have been um, removed, some of the detail just in using this for testing purposes. But typically, this will go in and open up the transaction. So let's try it here on the journal entry because I should have that side of the transaction. So this does open up the journal entry. Um, again, the issues we're seeing here just because this is on uh, this way this test system has been configured. But if we could look at this and say, okay, here's my transaction. I see it's a cash receipt. I could then drill back to another level and see this um, cash receipts inquiry information. Okay. So once you run this, it has saved a copy. When you first ran this file, it asked you where you wanted to output it. So it has saved a copy here on my desktop. It also gives us the information here on the screen. So if you don't really want to go in and see all of this detail, you just want to see if you balance, you can look here and see what your differences are. So the difference between my subledger and my ledger, beginning and ending, I can see that I have the same difference for both. So I'm, I'm reconciling, all right? Let's do this. We will save this one. It automatically changes this to our next reconciliation number, which it changed it to seven. I could change this to look at the receivables management. I could look at the payables. Let's look at our payables in this case. In payables, we have multiple accounts listed. So let's process this. And as you can see, here's all of our payables accounts. In this case, we only have um, activity in this first account. We can see we don't have any debits or credits listed for the other accounts here. We don't have any unmatched transactions, but we do have some potentially matched transactions. So if I were to um, look at my potentially matched transactions, I could select it and see why this one is showing up as a potentially match. So we could drill into it, get a little more information by going to that distribution screen. And so I see my payables here for $4,405.10. That should be what has hit my subledger and my, um, my subledger and my ledger here. So we would have to look and see on that one, why it's showing as, um, oh, I didn't mean to close that, why it was showing as a potentially matched and not matched. So we'll just process that one again. Okay. So it looks like what it has done here is we have it showing the 4,495 
which if we would go back and look, there's probably another line here with the discount. So we would have to go in and, and look at those transactions. But if we scroll down, we can also see here at the bottom, we have a difference. These columns are different amounts. So then we could put a formula in place to see what the difference is between the two. So this is our total payables management beginning balance, our total GL beginning balance, then our total ending balance. Okay. So we could just simply come in and see what um, we put it in a date column, but we could see what that dollar dollar amount is for our difference. Okay. So the few things to keep in mind for this is if you have transactions that are showing up in your unmatched portion here at the top, a few things you may want to check for is you may want to go back into GP and see if you have any unposted batches. You may also want to check the dates on those batches and see if you are posting, if you are using the document date or the batch date or the um, for your posting dates. You may also want to review your posting setup inside of GP to make sure that in your posting setup, if you're posting it as a batch, that you have that post to and post through the GL options checked so that when you're posting that it's posting to your sub ledger and your ledger at the same time. So I, and, and then if you do have any other discrepancies here in the unmatched, you can always drill into them, look at them here. You can always go into smart list, run some smart list. But this is something that is, this reconcile tool is extremely helpful as part of your month end, or even just if you're doing um, midweek reconcile and you have questions about how the accounts look and are they staying in line. We did not look at the bank rec or the inventory reconciles, but they come in the exact same format. The one thing I will mention with this, if we change this to say, um, if we go into our reconcile to GL and we change this to bank reconciliation, it does have one additional field here. If you notice, we, ha we don't have any accounts selected, but if we select a checkbook, it will automatically populate this account. So for our first bank, it's populating this with our natural account is 1100. If I change this to Uptown Trust, it has changed that. That is also 1100. And our petty cash is 1130. So you can notice here that it, it does put in the correct corresponding account. Um, if we were to process this, you'll see that it looks a lot like the other reconciliations. There you go. There's our, so we do have some unmatched transactions here. So we'd have to go in and see why these transactions are showing up in the GL, but we're not showing up in our sub ledger. Okay. So that is our reconcile to GL tool for today. Uh, did we have any questions? Um, Billy, I'm looking at the chat box and we don't have anything right now, so I'll give a few seconds to see if anybody asks anything. Okay, so while we are waiting for that, if, um, if you have a suggestion on something that you would like us to present on, you can send that to ideas at masseyconsulting.net. And I will um, also, our next GP customer hour is going to be on November 14th. Typically, we do it um, the third Thursday of each month, but in this case, that falls, um, that should say the third Tuesday. I'm sorry, I will correct that. The third Tuesday of each month, but the third Tuesday in this case is right before Thanksgiving, so we are moving this out. So we hope everyone can join us for our November 14th, 2017 session. And again, if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see, please email 
um, ideas at masseyconsulting.net. And I don't think there's any questions. Um, so I think that's it for today. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you.